Hey, I'm chilling, right? Doing my thing. I hop on Twitter and the impossible happens. I ain't think I ever see the day. Ladies and gentlemen, NBA 2K just apologized. We all have that one friend, uh, mine is named Waleed, that doesn't know how to say he did something wrong. And especially in the business world, it's almost like you're not even supposed to. Like NBA Live only apologized about how bad NBA Live 14 was when 15 was about to come out because that was their selling point, an apology. So that's the kind of people we're dealing with right now. Unbeknownst to me, I've been caught off guard when a situation I didn't even think was that big, 2K just apologized for. Let me fill you in. Hey, so if you haven't been paying attention, 2K caught a lot of flack from industry media for including unskippable ads in their 2K TV episode that started before the games, right? And the important part here is unskippable. The fact that they would add that into a game that already exists $60 is mind blowing. But if you've been playing 2K, that's not nothing new to you. Cause you could hop into the neighborhood where that's also an unskippable ad. Why do you think they don't add draw distance settings or an ability to just blur out the background when you're playing on the park. It's because people pay to be on those billboards. And so if those were blurred out, then that'd be a lot less impressions, a lot less sales. We haven't forgotten about NBA 2K18 and how they just stuffed in all those Reese's ads in the cutscenes, and they wouldn't let you skip them regardless of how many times you played it. And remember that year, the, the, everybody was furious about the, uh, the fact that we had to sit through a micro we already played because we made another character just so we could see more ads. That's crazy. It'd be one thing if 2K was free to play, but the fact that it's a $60 game is the reason why people were getting furious. And in NBA 2K18, we saw them take steps backwards and give people the ability to skip cutscenes after the first time they play a my career. So the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, they don't have to watch them no more. Same thing happened with haircuts in 2K18. We got like a mini apology about that, like a my bad. We got a my bad about the haircut prices. But this is like a real, like they put out a, a whole statement. They say, 2K community, as many are aware, in recent years, ads have been integrated into 2K TV segments. Yesterday's 2K TV ad placement impacted our players' experience in a way we didn't intent as these ads are not meant to run as part of the pregame introduction this will be fixed in future episodes thank you for your continued feedback so after you just heard me say what i said and then you read what 2k just said you'd be like agent the stuff you talked about about the billboards and the stuff that happened in 2k18 was way worse than 2k tv ad placements before you play a game so i i got to thinking why did 2K apologize for this of all things? I'm curious. Keep in mind, remember who's talking here. I'm a guy who spent thousands of dollars on cameos so celebrities can say things to 2K that I wanted in the game because they don't listen to me or other content creators. They'll listen to a celebrity though. But that didn't work. Man, I got Kareem to ask for some stuff. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I mean, if Kareem don't work, then I don't know what will. But it seems like today, on this very fine afternoon, evening, night, morning, whenever you're watching this, I got my answer. Industry, guys, industry would solve the problem. You guys have to think about how this gaming ecosystem works. For me to get invited to like, for example, let's say I wanna go to E3 and I wanna get invited. It's hard to do that on your own. To be able to do that, you have to reach out to an agent who's more industry, right? But more than likely, you probably have a connection to a brand. And so the one time I went to E3 where I did get an invite to the Sony press conference was through a company called World Gaming that's owned by Cineplex. Industry. It seems like to be connected in the business world, you have to know people in the industry. And so regardless of how much uh, outrage there was in 2K18 about haircut prices or be fresh and unskippable Reese's cutscenes, regardless of all of that stuff, the fact that it was coming from gamers or online content creators meant that it just carried less weight. That's what I'm coming to realize. Mike Wang even said the, the reason that there's six, eight point guards in 2K right now is because Damian Lillard asked for it. And so that's a celebrity right there. But the most effective way to get something done is to have Polygon drop an article about it. So think about how this goes. The only reason all of this stuff got attention is because a few people thought something and then it wasn't those thoughts that created nothing. It was the articles that dropped as a result of those thoughts. So the first article I seen was from Polygon and the title was Unskippable Advertising returns to NBA 2K, fans angry. And it just talks about what we just talked about. They actually even have an in-game example. I kind of want to see it. So this is the ad that they're referring to. And I've seen this ad on Twitch before. So 2K is really just using their pregame as an opportunity to sell things. Hey, to me, 
This is not even remotely the worst thing 2K has done in the last six months alone. So for this to be the thing they apologize for catches me off guard. There was another article that dropped from another industry website, Eurogamer. 2K under fire for adding unskippable in-game ads to the full price NBA 2K21 one month after release. <laughs> I could tell just based on the title they was talking. 2K pulled a similar trick with last year's game, a move that was similarly criticized by fans. So that's why I can't take this apology seriously because if you've if you been paying attention, they did it last year. And last year, the only reason it was brought attention to it was because of a Reddit post saying unskippable ads in a $60 game. 2K and it has 15,000 upvotes, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the date of this article, October 28th, 2019, and it's people complaining about the same thing. So they did it last year, people didn't like it, and they removed it, and they did it again this year, had the same result, and was like, sorry, it had, and I quote, unintended consequences. How, how, how could you, that's, what the f That'd be like if I shot you in the knee and you died and I was like, that was an unintended consequence. But we knew it was going to be very painful regardless of whether or not the result was death because I've shot you in the knee before and you were screaming in agony. So I don't, I refuse to believe that this is a real situation. I've been to a few NBA 2K community day events before and you know what's crazy is when you go to those events, as a content creator, you almost expect the whole event to be other content creators. But it's not. It was like a quarter content creators, a quarter was like Instagram models that really had no business there. They were just bored and wanted Instagram photos. And then the last group of people was 50% industry. And you know who those people were just based on how they dress. Hey, how you doing? What, what, what do you do? Oh, I work for this company. We do blogs or we do videos or we write articles or we do game reviews. That is like a huge focus for a lot of like these gaming companies. They want to be on the good side so that Polygon isn't talking, Eurogamer isn't talking, 2K does not care if I criticize them. It really does not matter to them. If I have great feedback and it help improve the game and the dev side, then they'll pass it along. That's how it works. But if I say something bad about the game, they're like, that's agent's opinion. We don't really care about agent's opinion. But they care about Eurogamers. That's what I'm trying to say right now. They care about Eurogamer and Polygon's opinion. Which, which is the real question you want to ask then is, why? Because if I'm 2K and I wanted to get the information out about a dope feature they want to add to Next Gen 2K21, I hit up like Chris Smooth. It's gonna guaranteed to get anywhere from 300,000 to a million views on the video. Everybody watches and trusts Chris Smooth or any content creator in the space as trusted as him. And you know it's gonna bang and it's in a video that it's easily digestible. Text and blogs are not easily digestible. The world has been moving away from this. And I don't know the exact numbers on these websites but I can't imagine they're more than Troydan. I just can't, there's just no way. But Troydan's opinion really doesn't matter neither. So, I mean, I'm not saying that content creators should get like million influence points. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just perplexed as to why this warranted an apology. Well, if that's the case, Polygon needs to drop a video about microtransactions tomorrow because we just got used to it, but it's still wild. The fact that I dropped $60 on the game and then $50 for every additional player and then on top of that, God forbid you play my team and every time they drop a new box, you gotta spend a 20, a 30 on that. 2K is a business, you know what I'm saying? And the reality of, about the gaming industry is that it's very, very competitive and it's very, very high risk. So the benefit about 2K is 2K is one of the lowest risk games out there. You know what I'm saying? When you make a new IP like Horizon Zero Dawn and you're Sony, the publisher, you don't know if this is gonna flop. You have no clue whether or not you're gonna get your investment on this. But when you make the 21st edition of a basketball game that's selling more and more every year, that's the safest bet you could imaginably make. So the bets that they do take risks on is stuff like this. These are the risks that they take because they know it's gonna sell and it's gonna keep selling. But how do we get more on microtransactions? If you look at, if you just go into their financial reports that they have to drop publicly because they're a publicly traded company, you'll quickly realize they like to brag a lot about the sales that they make on microtransactions. It's a big part of why 2K was valued so high and why if it begins to stagnate and they don't find new ways to get microtransactions from people, regardless of how egregious it is, that their stock price is gonna drop. This is take two stock price. And if we look oh so carefully, around like 2008, 2009, the company was actually about to go bankrupt. So with this coming from a gamer, I understand why games, I mean, publishers had to make money. Telltale Games, incredibly talented developers. They made the Walking Dead series, 
a whole bunch of games. Fantastic. Unfortunately, out of business. They couldn't find a way to monetize what they had. Take Two made a change, and the reason their stock price began to skyrocket is because they just found creative ways to make money outside of the initial $60 game. It's something EA has been doing for a while too, where they don't see video games as like a product no more, they see it as a service. PlayStation made that change when they started charging people for PlayStation Plus if they wanted to play online with their friends. And back in the PlayStation 3 days, remember, they didn't used to do that. But they need that recurring income because, first of all, people don't care cancel recurring payments. Some of y'all is paying for Netflix subscriptions that you haven't used in six months or gym memberships that you haven't used in two years. So these companies are smart. If they wanna see this continue to rise, they have to find new ways. This is 2K's attempt to find new ways and push the envelope. To a certain extent, I understand when 2K does like microtransactions, is it a lot with my team? Yes. $50 for every player, is that way too much? Should it be way lower? Yes. Because they're also making shit off of like the store in the game, like the aesthetic stuff that really doesn't play into the game, that doesn't make the game any more play to win than it already is. But at the same time, there should be limits to it. If you monetizing a part of the game interferes with my ability to enjoy it, then you need to stop. Because the whole point of your product, or you want to consider a service now, is to enjoy it, 2K. And right now, 2K, the fact that I can't just minimize the background so I have a higher performance, so the frames aren't dropping and it's not skipping and lagging in the playground, is affecting my performance. So that's why it frustrates me. And to me, that's way more egregious. The fact that there is a solve, there is a fix to an ongoing performance issue in the playground is one we've all experienced over the past however long you've been playing 2K. But that doesn't get fixed, that doesn't get addressed, that doesn't even warrant like the fact that they know it's a problem. We, they don't even think it's an issue right now. But having the ad before you play the game is an issue because Polygon said so. So what I'm starting to realize is that um, these companies, these industry companies, these guys that are plugged out of their minds, think about it for a moment. They have so much influence over the way that game developers make games. For example, let me show you guys something. I'm a huge, you know what I'm saying, PlayStation guy. I've been playing PlayStation since I was a little boy. When I was four years old and I had a PlayStation 1. Now I do this content creating stuff. I have a good audience here. It shouldn't be hard for me to reach out to PlayStation and get like an early copy. It shouldn't be hard for me to reach out to Microsoft, but it is hard. You know how I'm gonna get a copy of one of these consoles early, guys? It's gonna have to be from a company that I actively work with. You know what I'm saying? I, I work with the Raptors Uprise and NBA 2K League. They might have some copies and I know for a fact they're gonna be plugged up. So it's almost like even if you're in like the content creating world, or you have, it doesn't matter what kind of influence you have anywhere on the planet. If you don't have industry connects or like if you're not an industry person, then it really doesn't matter what you have to say. If a Reddit post that has 15,000 upvotes wasn't enough to get an apology, but Polygon's article was, what are we talking about right now? It's so unprecedented for 2K to actually drop a statement apologizing. That is so unprecedented. And the last time I remember seeing it happen was in 2K18 with the haircut stuff. I think Jared Smith put out a tweet asking why the haircut price was so crazy. And then people started to pick it up and I bet articles were dropped. Hold on, let me find out. <laughs> Of course, of course. I don't like it. I don't even. These are just. They're not predictions no more. I just be knowing. Uh, if you look carefully, Kotaku dropped the article. Another video game. I don't know what you consider these guys a publisher. They do reviews and news and stuff. NBA 2K is very sorry about charging players for their haircuts. So we just had to have industry get involved when we need something changed. You know what I'm saying? So this is a message to industry out there. When you talk to 2K about adding proximity chat, I guarantee you it's gonna be a simple thing to add and it will dramatically change how the game is played in infinitely more fun ways. Can we start taking a, like a hard look on why it's impossible for 2K to fix their performance issues in their online game modes? Because the game be feeling smooth when you play offline. You hop online, boom, different story. Can we talk about how we don't have like, we need more level design. Like when we play 3v3 Prime, I need to be able to play in Venice and then a Philly park in the, in the city and then a New York rooftop and then Beijing. Like it needs to be everywhere, guys. And the last thing I want to say is I already knew this to be the fact, but I didn't really understand to which degree. If you guys remember and you've been part of this, you've been following 2K for years now, there was years uh, up until recently where 2K, instead of releasing their own news like they're doing on their website now or on their Facebook, they'll give it to Forbes and an, art an article will drop on Forbes with all the news and they'll get like the exclusive first upload about some real dramatic news about the game. Think about how crazy that is for a moment. Instead of uploading it to their own website or 
giving it to like, who's the biggest content creator in the 2K space? Troy Dan, probably. Giving it to Troy Dan, Troy Dan make a video. Or one of the most trusted people, Chris Smooth, give it to Chris Smooth. They gave it to Forbes because they knew that's what people were watching. Or I don't know if that's, I don't know what the analytics are behind those. I don't know what the views are on those articles. All I do know is 2K really, really cares about their opinion. So I think that's fascinating. Uh, I just been, I've been thinking about it ever since I seen the apology a few hours ago. Hey, I'm curious what y'all think about the situation. Drop your opinion. I rarely ask, but I'm genuinely curious in the comments down below. If y'all new to the channel, man, you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Uh, we drop these videos whenever I feel like it at this point. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So don't miss out. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.